Hi, my name's Richard and a warm, warm welcome to my channel. Right, we're going to have a little discussion about the current fuel shortage and what's it all about. Now, I'm going to sit here like a newsreader. I've taken some notes, so please bear with me. I'm going to work my way through here. But um, some people might find this quite interesting um, and what I'm about to say about the fuel shortage. Um, I have done a previous video about the truck drivers shortage and I had some lovely, lovely reviews on that and some excellent subscribers and comments. So thank you very much to everybody to actually who viewed that and made the comments and subscribed. Thank you very much. Um, but this one is going to be about the fuel and crisis and what it's all about. Well, anyway, I've introduced myself. My name's Richard and I do a mechanical channel, which is hence Richard's Home Mechanics, and I also do a, a vlog on current subjects in the UK and around the world. So, without no further ado, shall we crack on? Now, we're getting serious now, because my glasses are going on. Look at that, and let's have a look at what we're going to be talking about. Right, um, about me. I was very fortunate that I have been driving HGVs for many years and during my driving career I was fortunate enough to be able to be a tanker driver. Now my tanker driving um, was not to uh, the local petrol stations in your garage, uh, in your high street, in your city etc. Mine was the commercial sector so I delivered to farms and factories and also fitted in there uh, was for to the domestic uh, part like doing heating fuels etc 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 right um, my qualifications also covered me to do fuel and chemicals corrosive chemicals but the firm I worked for um, didn't do that so I didn't need to but I was still on tankers so I do feel that I do have a, a little understanding of what these fuel tanker drivers are going through and the reason of what's going on Right, this is going out to all HGV tanker drivers and all HGV drivers. This is going to be the greatest respect. So I just want to have a little chat about this. I do not drive HGV trucks now anymore, and that is my choice. Um, I've did it for many years. Um, I've done my fair share. I'm in my mid fifties now, and I and I'm, I'm winding it down. So I've jumped into a warehouse and I drive a little Ford truck, pooling around eight to five, and that suits me. I'm not here to slag drivers off because I have got the greatest respect for all HGV drivers, van drivers and bus drivers. It's hard out there. I've been there. I've done it. So, you know, you're doing a fantastic job. I actually want and feel that the whole country personally should put a big thumbs up to all the HGV drivers out there because, you know, without you this job wouldn't be done with this country would grind to a standstill so respect to you all and I hope I'm saying that from the heart and from everyone in the UK you will get your haters um, which you will do in everything you do but from me personally and behalf of the UK you are doing a fantastic job keep it up right why haven't we got any fuel at the pumps who is to blame for that Is it the media? The programmes in the morning, without mentioning names, um, saying there's going to be a, a shortage? Is it the public? Is it me? Is it you? What's causing the shortage of fuel at the pumps? And what's it all about? I've got an example here. Now, this is an example. Mr Jones normally fills his car up on a Friday, okay? And religiously, he puts £20 in every Friday. He only works local and he pops down to the shop and he's semi-retired. He puts £20 in. Also, Mrs Smith, who does a lot of school runs and is working full-time, she pulls in on a Tuesday and puts £50 of fuel in. So you know the scenario we're heading here. Mr Jones, £20 once a week. Mrs Smith, once a week, puts £50 in, religiously. And so the scenario goes on and on and on. Right. So Mrs. Smith, Miss, Mrs. Smith and Mr. Jones are sitting at home having their breakfast. And all of a sudden, a news flash comes up. There's, there's going to be a fuel shortage. 
So Mrs. Jones and Mr. Smith have done nothing more than what I would possibly do, and all of you out there, they've gone down to the garage and filled up. Two things are gonna happen when they do this. Now, Mr. Jones only normally puts 20 pound in once a week, but because there's gonna be a fuel shortage, he's filled it right up to the brim. And I can't blame him, you know? You know, truthful people may sit there and say, oh, I didn't do it. Well, you will, you know? If you've got to get to work, you will go and fill your car up. You're not gonna put 20 quid in, because don't tell me you won't. Some people will, some people won't. But most people, and I can't blame them, will fill their car up. And Mrs. Smith has done the same. They've also gone a day earlier. So Mr. Smith normally fills up, I think it was on the Friday. Mrs. Smith on the Tuesday. Now they've gone a day earlier. It's now like uh, Wednesday. So they've both filled up. Now they've filled up earlier there and put more fuel in that they normally would. So already we are putting a strain on that reserve in them fuel tanks or bunkers at the station. Right, scenario. Okay, petrol stations. Now run with me on this. You may think, what the hell is he going on about? But it's, it's a way that I'm trying to explain I think, and a lot of other people think, why well, we've got a shortage. Right, it's like a baker. Say a baker bakes 400 rolls a day. He's had a big order come in, a thousand rolls. So to make them thousand rolls, he's had to use more flour. So he's now got to order a load more flour, another 40 bags. Now his supplier, the local mill, they're used to supplying, say, 20,000 sacks or 20,000 tonnes a week. All of a sudden, all these little bakers are coming forward and said, we need more flour, we need more flour. They can't, they can't supply it. You know, they're used to knocking out their 20,000 tonnes a week. They can't do 30. It won't happen. So it's starting the ball rolling. Let's have a look. So now let's, so now let's say... Same scenario as a petrol station. Petrol stations have limited amount of storage in their bunkers underground. Now, petrol stations are very similar to the baker. They are used to selling X amount of diesel fuel a week. You know, so off the top of my head, their underground storage bunker holds 50,000 gallons. Could be more, could be less. All of a sudden, they've got a surge of people coming in. That 50,000 gallons might have lasted four days. Now we're down to two. Now these bunkers, you can't drain them dry. You have to have a reservoir in the bottom. It's very similar to your car petrol. I mean, your tank in your car. You wouldn't run your tank completely empty because you can suck fuel into your, into your um, fuel system. That's bad news. And it's the same as the bunkers, they can't empty them. They have to have a certain reservoir in the bottom. So they can't even draw on that. Even though they've got 50,000, they might use 40,000. I don't know. I don't work in a petrol station, but I would assume that's how it works. So they can only store that amount of fuel. And once it's gone, it's gone. So you say to yourself, well, why can't the garage or the fuel stations order some more fuel, it's as simple as that. Get on the dog and bone and order some. But unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. We are going back to the refinery. Now, when I used to do tankers, I have to go to the refinery or the stations and fill up the tanks, uh, my tanker, ready to go out. Now, if I've got the terminology wrong, please don't um, slate me on it. This is just a general chit chat of why I and many other people think we've got a fuel shortage. Right, so the garages are running out of fuel, like the baker is running out of flour. They ring them up on the dog and bone. Sorry mate, you know, we've had such a demand, the refinery can't produce it. It goes even further back. The tank is coming in with the oil. They're so used to a constant flow like that, every week, week in, week out, week in, the tanker comes in, goes into the refinery, it's made into diesel, petrol, whatever. Well, they can't all of a sudden start producing more ships to bring it over. It, they can't do it. So, the scenario goes on. So once you've drained them tanks, you're not gonna fill them up quick enough. You know, all right, there is a shortage of drivers, and we know that. 
But I've spoken to a tanker driver and he said, you know, there is fuel there, they just can't get it out. You know, it, it, it's delayed. It's gonna, it's a knock on. Imagine dominoes, bang, 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 bang. From the garage, it goes all the way back to the refinery, to the tankers. Right, this is quite a, a strong point, whether I'm right or wrong in saying this, um, not accusing anybody of this, but I feel the government went slightly wrong on this. A, they did scaremonger the people to panic buy on this fuel, but also, why didn't they prioritise it? If they knew there's gonna be issue, now these are people who are paid a lot of money, a lot of money more than you and me. Why didn't they get it right? They didn't get it right, did they? They made a mistake, but they're never gonna put their hand up to it. The government should have prioritised who gets fuel. Not um, Mr, um, I don't know, Mr Surrey, who goes out once a month in his car and spends 10 pound. Why has he filled his car up with 60, 70 pound? He didn't need to. That's causing the problem. All the little punters out there filling their cars up who poodle around and use 10, 20 pound a month is draining the tanks. Just sit back and let the people who really need it have it. People we're talking about who need it, it's just scraping the services. It's the emergency services. Let the emergency ambulances, for God's sake, get in there and fill up. I've heard of scenarios where an ambulance was trying to fill up with fuel in a station and he was blocked out. My God, what are you doing? That could be your child or you or one of your members of family in the ambulance. Let them through, let them fill up. What was that all about? They blocked an ambulance because they were selfish and they wanted to fill themselves out. Let them emergency services get in and fill. The NHS, let the NHS fill up. If you know someone and they're saying I'm a nurse and you can see a nurse's uniform, wave them through, let them fill up. They're priority. You know, they need the fuel, they need to get to work. They're saving lives, for God's sake. The police, we need the police out there. Without the police, it'll be chaotic. Commercial drivers, well, we've been there and done it. These lorries, these vans, these coaches, these buses, they need fuel. They keep the country running, the archery running let them get fuel. Give them priority. If you're listening out there, give them priority. Another little one. Taxis. Let taxis, because if people haven't got fuel in their car, they can jump in a taxi. Let the taxis fill up. They've got a living to do. The van drivers have got a living to do. You know, if you're, you know, I have got a couple of vehicles here. I've got a motorcycle. My own scenario, Right, I run a motorcycle, I haven't filled it up. I don't need to. When this crisis started, I had half a tank of fuel and I used 10 pound a month to go to work. So I haven't gone down the garage. I'm hoping within a couple of weeks, and I can get by in a couple of weeks, I'll better get a fuel. So I've not rushed down here. No need to. If we hold back, there won't be a shortage. Stop hitting them garages. If you don't need it, don't get it. Just sit back. Let them emergency services, the people who really need it, get their fuel. You imagine how they feel, they're trying to get to work. There's people dying out there. For God's sake, let the emergency services fill up. People like me, I work in a warehouse. It's not the bee's knees all, you know, if I, um, if I don't get to work, you know? It's not the end of the world. I work at a warehouse. No one's gonna die if I don't turn up tomorrow. No one's gonna die. Doesn't make a hoot if I turn up. Anyway, the moral of the story is, please let them emergency services fill up. Think before you need to fill up. Do you really need to fill up? You know, do you need to? If we all sit back and just let it run its course, it will catch up. The only way you could really do this, I could see doing this, is if they shut the garages for three or four days. I mean, I'm not a, 
a coordinator, a transport manager, so I don't know how long it would take. That would work, shut the garages, let them fill up, and then prioritise who gets fuel, then we wouldn't have a fuel shortage. But we know that's unpractical and we can't do that. The, the, the world goes on, we know that, we know that. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching my vlog. Good luck and stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.